Hey guys, welcome to Frasier Friday. This is uh, Dan here, Merlin here, uh, and we are uh, diving into Season 2. This is Season 2, Part 1. We're divvying these seasons up into uh, episode chunks. Um, and these early seasons have 24 episodes, so we're going to do 12 at a time. Because um, we'll, we'll touch on each one a little bit. Just enough. Um, just enough. Just enough, and then of course at the end of the next episode we'll give the whole season a grade. There's always enough content. There really is. There's there's no shortage of topics when you talk about Frasier. So this is season two, which I have right here. This is the as we realized last time, the last season with the the long the mullet, the thing. mullet, the balding mullet. I'm gonna miss it. Yeah. I kind of got used to it. And well, and we were used to it for so long on Cheers. Niles' hair is really weird here too. It's like a almost like a bowl cut. I don't. It doesn't look like that in the episodes. I, don't I, think, I feel like that, that might have been reshot. Yeah, that, that may have been that, reshot or reshot. Photoshopped because that doesn't look right. Very weird. Um, but anyway, so um, <laughs> so we open with uh, the like episode a... Slow Tango in South Seattle. And this is the one where uh, we see Jay Peterman uh, from Seinfeld. John O'Hurley comes in as an old friend of his, uh, turned his uh, uh, romantic tryst that Fraser had when he was a youngster mm -hmm. into a very popular romance novel. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I thought this was a pretty decent season opener. It was interesting. Yeah, it was interesting. Um, I'm not sure that it gave me all the laughs that some of the other ones did. Um, no. Um, it, it, it was an interesting scenario, though. Yes, it was an interesting scenario. Um, and I think, I mean, I love John O'Hurley. Who doesn't? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so, you know, he, he played it well. Um, my favorite part of the episode really was uh, sort of the, the tale of it when Frazier went to see the former piano teacher that uh, <laughs> had taken his virginity. Yeah. And, you know, sort of mistaken identity there. And there's some good gags there. But, the mother and the um, <laughs> But I think, you know, it's, it's interesting, um, you know, how that sort of plays out. Because, A, you've got the sibling rivalry, because mm -hmm. Niles is like, oh, all she taught me was piano, piano. you know. Um, and then you've got the whole thing of, you know, to Frazier, this was a huge, you know, deal. he lost his virginity, this was a huge deal. And to her, it was just... A fling. A fling, you know. She didn't even care that he sort of left in the, you know, without saying goodbye or anything. She was like, well, whatever, you were a kid, like... Got over it. Got over it, Yeah. So I thought that was interesting. That's a very uh, realistic thing a lot, a lot of people might run into. Mm -hmm. So it's it's like a lot of one of the things I like about Frasier is it, it um, they really do touch on a lot of very grounded human things. Yes, that come and up. delve into them. And they and they do. It's and, not just like a joke. And yes, it, like it is funny, like to mm -hmm. some extent, but they do dive in and trying to reconnect with that person and this. To somebody, it's like this big momentous thing that changed right. your life. Somebody else, it's like barely a memory. It's barely a blip. So it's interesting. Yeah. yeah. So I enjoyed that one. I, I gave that uh, an A-. minus. It's pretty good. Um, yeah, not bad for a season premiere, sure. Um, so next is The Unkindest Cut of All. Oh. This is uh, where we have uh, Eddie, who um, is <laughs> going to get chopped up at the, uh, the no. doctor, at the vet. Uh, his testicles chopped off because he uh, fathers a, a litter of puppies. Oh. Uh, you know, there's some comedy there. You know, it's the uh, the Martin connection again. The conflict there, like they were going yes. up to. Oh, absolutely. Like you're, they bounce around, like why? Okay, why is it such a big deal yeah. for him to take care of it? It's another one of the classic pushings of like his responsibility. Like he's my dog, it's my thing. Right. I'll take care of it. And yeah, I didn't. But then quite, he doesn't. But then he doesn't. And oh, you, you know what? I'll, my favorite little gag is, at, is at the end when they all when they're all in their the legs, office. Like, yep. There's a lot of uh, good end credit gags in this season. Actually, this is there where are. they sort of, I think, figured out how to how to do basically a silent scene over the credits in you know thirty seconds or whatever it is. One little chuckle. Have a little tag. Yeah, uh, there's a few good ones in this. This was not one of my favorites though of the season. No. You know, um, I, I gave this one a B. I thought it was okay. Um, it, it. I don't know. I mean. I guess I liked the Martin bit. Uh, yeah, the Martin bit was okay. Uh, it seemed, it just seemed like that sort of topic had been Touched broached upon. before on other sitcoms. Uh, maybe not specifically with a dog. Well, but I guess that might be one question. I mean, we could we could go into it later in the second half if you want. But I guess we didn't really touch upon Eddie as a character. No, not yet. I think I think that could be interesting. We could talk how, about that. How, yeah, how at the end of, at the end of the uh, so, season two wrap up. Let's talk about that. Okay. 
Um, so up next, this is my favorite of the season, mm -hmm. and I just learned when I pulled this up that this was ranked uh, number 43 on the 100 Greatest Episodes from TV Guide. Now, this was about 20 years ago they did the list, so <laughs> who knows if it would still be on there. But uh, yeah, it's, it's my only A-plus of the season, Okay. and this is uh, The Matchmaker. This is when we have a new station manager, uh, Frazier invites him to the house, and he he is gay and thinks that Frazier is also gay and is hitting on him, but he's actually trying to set Daphne up with him. <laughs> and then uh, there's a lot of great uh, double entendres, miscommunications. Farce. He thinks Martin is also gay and hitting on him. Um, Miles isn't gay? Are you sure? <laughs> uh, the, the, Eric Lutz is the, uh, the guy who plays the manager, and he is... I don't know him from anything else, but he's great in this episode. He's so funny. You know, this is one of the ones. You know how like you have those episodes that kind of stand out. You remember them. Mm -hmm. I remember this. Uh, like I think when I think of Frasier classics, I think this is one of them. Yeah, this is definitely yeah. Like in my probably top five of ones, like I always like top of mind think about because it's so funny. Um, my favorite is later in the season. Oh, I can't wait for that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like you said, it's it's a great farce, which Frasier uh, you know excels at. Yeah, it's a it's a really good uh, just miscommunication gag. It know? is, and you know I'm uh, one of the older shows I'm currently going through is uh, Three's Company, mm -hmm. which is known for the classic mis mishearing something and thinking it's sexual or thinking whatever. It's just done on such a basic level, mm -hmm. you know, that here it's it's elevated to, uh, you know, uh, something more did, did the 90s, artful, I guess. Did the 90s, I guess, or the 80s, like, when did they start pushing that? Because I I, I remember that Seinfeld really, like, was known for pushing a lot of the, the sexual stuff, like with the contest, for instance. But, mm -hmm. I, but I realized watching Frasier, they delve, they're... They're pretty raunchy. Cheers was very, very open about it. I, I one gag, one gag. My mom had to explain to me that was on Cheers was about uh, Sam having a, an erection. Oh, and they did like a whole sight gag with it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so I thought that was like okay, that's pretty. But you know, I would say it just surprises me. I would say mid to late eighties is when that stuff really took off because Golden Girls was very sexual. Uh huh. Um, Night Court was very sexual. See, um, I just, I'm so used and to... And Cheers. Maybe it's because TV is just different with everybody's so PC now. Like, they, they, I don't know, like, obviously it's, it's not, it's not super obvious, but they just, right. they delve into a lot of those kind of jokes, and I'm like, it just surprises me. Like, Frazier does it a lot, which makes sense, because they, they touch on a lot of those things. Yeah. But, there's just a lot of well, it. Well, it's a, it's, it's a high, more highbrow show, too. Like, I don't think there were a lot of it's, kids watching Frasier. Mm. Whereas Three's Company, it was all innuendo. I mean, I you know, maybe they said the word sex sometimes, but, you know, you never heard the word penis or anything, you know, of that level on there. Hmm. Whereas Golden Girls, you know, I remember I remember having to ask my mom what impotent was. Because, oh. because they said it on Golden Girls, and I'm like, what is that? I was like 9 or 10 or whatever. Gotcha. So, yeah, I would say mid to late 80s is when that really... Started taking off, I okay. think. Okay, makes sense. Um, hmm. But what a great episode. Very good, yeah. I mean, I, classic. I'm glad that uh, TV Guide, you know, put it on their on their list there. Mm -hmm. um, I just lost my, my wiki page here. Um, so up next is uh, Flower Child. Okay, I remember this one without even looking at the description. This is the one where Niles um, walked around with the sack of flour. The baby. Because, yeah, he wanted to see how he would be as a father. And uh, he sure saw... <laughs> That it was not good. Um, yeah, 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 there was you know some some sight gags there. Some visual comedy. Um, but again, that's it's a B for me. I mean, that was I guess it was like a double A story because there was that, and then there was um, Fraser trying to get the card back from the guy in the hospital. I liked that part. That part was funny. I liked that part. Yeah. Um, so I, I enjoyed that. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I left it with a B. It was okay. That's fine. Um, Dukes We Hardly Knew Ye was next. Oh. This is a good one. That's a really good one. Um, yeah. Frazier and Niles are part of this group uh, of construction workers that... That's another one I remember. ...is well. going to, you know, they're going to find out that they're tearing down Dukes. And as they're there celebrating with their dad, they find out they're the ones, doing you know, it. whose company is doing it. Um, yeah, I really like this one. It's a good one. Uh, a, a, there's actually a couple of really good bonding 
crane bonding episodes in this season. Yeah. And this is this is the first one of those where they can't even believe that they're invited to Dukes to begin with. Oh yeah, and it's like and it happens to be because it's the last day. Right, because right. Because it's closing, which because is it's closing. their fault. Yeah. Right. But then, you know, they come clean to their dad and say, Oh my god, you know, we, we can't realize but say this something. Is us. Yeah, yeah. Well, punch me, Dad, please <laughs> do something. Um and then and then he ends up going down and having a beer with Frazier and you know, bonding over that. Yeah, I, I thought that was a good one. That's an A minus as well. Um The Botched Language of Cranes. Oh, this is the one where uh, he talks to Fraser talks about moving away from Seattle because <laughs> of the rain. <laughs> and he can't seem to get it right. Like he keeps stumbling over his words and his apologies and he apologizes and then doesn't realize the mic is still on when he well, that says was great. more things than no, he shouldn't no, have said. No, no, it's still on. <laughs> what is wrong with these people in this signal? They know it's miserable. Um, <laughs> and then he goes, oh my god, then the, the capper is, the, the they have him speak at the charity dinner. Oh, and he's in the bathroom when he when the announcement comes in that the bishop was lost at sea. No, so, the bishop so he is doesn't lost. know it, and he starts coming out and telling like bishop jokes and stuff. Bob, saying, "Oh, I'm sure the bishop will float in, you know, Ooh. eventually." Um, oh, that was a pretty good one. Yeah, that's that, a good one. But that, that was one of those. It's like it's funny, but it's painful. Like, it's painful to watch. No, yeah. don't do it. But uh, that was an A minus as a, well. That's a good one. Yeah, I like that one a lot. <laughs> uh, the candidate is next. Uh, that is when Frazier and Martin go uh, crosshair on these two <laughs> candidates, and Frazier ends up backing this one who believes he was abducted by aliens. That was great. Um, yeah, you're you're more of the sci-fi guy. I want to hear your uh, take on this. I, this is another one of those ones that I really remembered. Uh, okay. Because I, I think especially more just with uh, you know these politically charged chimes and just the family going head-to-head. Yeah. Uh, just how... Like how much he really backs this candidate, I just I I think he seems so great on paper, but then he, you know how he wants to like you know let loose about his deepest personal secrets because yeah. he's a psychiatrist, you can trust me, and, <laughs> and that's okay, what he tells him. And I'll do it, and then it's like, well, you see, I was abducted by aliens, uh-huh. and he's like, I'm I really behind this guy that just might be like a crackpot, right? And then Niles and him try to like kind of logically go, well, you know, maybe you know who who knows? <laughs> what was it, what was the line? Oh yes. Well, hello, Fatal Frazier. Do you think that it's unlikely there might be intelligent life out there? I'm wondering if there's intelligent life right here <laughs> in, this kitchen. in this kitchen with me. Like, so I, uh, as a sci-fi guy, you know, it's it is kind of interesting because I I I thought that that reveal was hilarious. Yeah, that was that was because and, you really didn't expect it. And also, of course, the gag once again, misspeaking on the radio about right. thinking oh when he's talking about not the aliens, knowing, right? But not those types of aliens. Yes. And then then of course he. Loses by like ninety eight percent. That becomes kind of a staple in this season. Is really like the the miscommunication. Like Fraser thinks he's saying one thing, but really saying something else. Uh, and I think it really all starts with the matchmaker, and then it it, it sort of is in every other episode here. We're we're noticing. But yeah, I, I thought that um, was a good one. I, yeah, I thought it was all right. I, I give it a B plus. It wasn't my favorite of the season, but yeah. Yeah, definitely some. Some good humor there. That's a, that's a really good one. Uh, some classic sitcom stuff, you know? It's, yeah. It's kind of like hammy a little bit. A little. Um, all right, so let's see. Uh, two-parter is next. Adventures in Paradise 1 and 2. Um, this is when uh, Roz brings Frazier in on this uh, magazine article about the most eligible singles. Um, and then we have uh, the, the romantic getaway mm. in which he finds uh, Lilith. Yeah, at the uh, at the resort. Yeah, um, I thought this was a pretty funny one. You know, I think it was funny, but I thought it could have been funnier. Yeah, I definitely liked uh, Lilith. I, I don't think it necessarily needed to be a two parter for yeah, one thing. They stretched that out, stretched it out a bit. Uh, do you know what my my actually my bigger issue with it kind of was? Tell me. I did not really like the chemistry with him and his, the person he was with and how mm. he, I, I didn't how that developed I thought okay. it didn't I quite work, that. work for me uh, Lilith kind of randomly being there of course is ridiculous but it was it was kind of, that was kind of funny yeah um, and the, and the, the scene where was yeah, I was going to say the scene where they stumble in on oh, him like pretending oh, yes. like he's having sex but he's really just shaking the bed to get at them that's funny I also believe that woman would be way too forgiving even after that point I thought, like, after that... Yeah, like, that seemed a little bit unrealistic. E- even for Frazier, like, that, I think she yeah. would have gone after that. Yeah, I agree. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I mean, I always love a, L- a Lilith return, but certainly not my favorite no. of her episodes. I do like that they had uh, 
Shelley Long mm-hmm. as Diane in the in the dream sequence. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that was that was really good. Mm-hmm. Um, so I give that one a B plus. Uh, two parters like that, I just kind of grade as one unit. Okay. Um, so next is burying a grudge. This is uh, okay. Maris goes to the hospital for a facelift, and oh, this is when Martin's former partner was hospitalized. Mm. And as they're visiting Maris, they realize that and uh, try to get Martin to mend fences with him. It was a good one, I thought. Yeah, it was an okay one. I gave that a B plus as well. Not that funny. Not that funny. Um. Certainly of the more touching variety. Yeah. Um, and we see that start to rear its head this season, too, especially with Martin sort of getting older, mm. realizing, especially being a cop, that you know some of his buddies aren't with us anymore, that kind of thing. Yeah, I think in terms of like uh, mm. choking on the heartstrings, there's definitely better episodes in this season alone. True. Um, and B-plus might even be a little high, to be honest, for that one. Yeah. Uh, that might be a B. Uh, okay, so Seat of Power is next. This is, uh, oh, the one where um, they have to fix the toilet in the bathroom, and they get John C. McGinley from Scrubs. Uh, and that other guy. Who was... Oh, I know. Yeah, who, what's his name? Uh, is he, the same here? He pops up in things. Um, it doesn't say the other name, but yeah, he pops up in things. He was... Um, was he in Dumb and Dumber? Or... He might have been. He was in a Friends episode as well. He, he pops up. Um, but... Uh, they are confronting their bully um, from from childhood. I like this and, one. And, you know, these are the guys who are now, you know, the the crane boys need their help. You know, and they get there and realize, oh, my God, these are the guys who, you know, bullied us when we were kids. So they take two sort of different approaches to it. Well, they both go into it with right. the mindset of, like, let's not fight. And I think that's actually the thing I like the most. Okay. That episode, and that's kind of a recurring thing with Frazier, which I think is kind of from his Cheers days. He's it's like he is this um, high concept intellectual, and he yeah. he gives it's it's that it's that classic you know uh, don't take your own advice. Okay, like you can give it out, but you should listen yeah. to yourself. He gives Niles the advice, and he manages to face it and resolve it in, in a good way, and actually. Create some progress with the guy. Right. Whereas Frazier just goes in and just goes and fighting the guy. Well, and he goes in with that mentality, though, but, but then, then just loses it. He I, just, you know, and goes off the rails fairly that, quickly. That's kind of, I think, the big comedy with the character is he, yeah. he should know better, he does, but he gives into his anger and stuff a lot. <laughs> yeah, I would agree with that. Um, it's one of his trademarks, really. It really is. At this point. Uh, all right, so the final one we're going to talk about today is Roz in the Doghouse. This is uh, certainly one of the funniest ones, I think, one. of the season. This is where uh, Roz uh, gets an injury and Frazier sort of makes an offhanded insult to her about finding her replacement being so easy. Mm-hmm. So when she gets on the mend, she decides, you know what, I'm going to go produce for Bulldog. And so we see uh, <laughs> you know, a, a barrage of assistants and producers that come in to help Frazier that are you know, kind of funny, like sight gags. Montage. Uh, yeah, nice montage. Um, and then Old we see the Roz best. and <laughs> the one that falls asleep. Wake me up when it's over next time. <laughs> yeah, that was good. <laughs> um, and uh, so then Roz, you know, starts uh, producing for Bulldog, which Frazier's like, he's, you know, he's only looking to get in your pants. Like, don't trust him. And then, of course, by the end of the episode, we find that to be the case. <sighs> you know, which is funny, but mm-hmm. it's a shame a little bit. Like I, you know, like because you almost well, almost convinced, but it it would yeah, be out of character. It would be point. out of character, and of course, she's got to go back to producing oh, Fraser. Of so course. of course, it had to happen. Of course. Um, but I I really enjoyed that one. I think comedy wise, it's one of the funniest of the season. Oh, the ones you mentioned, it's uh, up there. Yeah. Yeah. So I left that one with an A. Um, and since we will be talking, I guess season two wrap up overall, the next episode. Mm-hmm. Um, why don't we talk about Eddie now? We have a little little bit of time here. Okay. Um, in this portion, so I, yeah, um, it just it was just kind of a thought because I remember when we touched on it at the beginning of season one, mm-hmm. we introduced all the characters, and I realized we didn't really touch on Eddie. And yeah, I think we sort of briefly mentioned him with the chair, with the chair, basically, because the chair is almost but, a character too. But I guess Eddie obviously Eddie certainly is more so a character, and he's yeah. a, he's an integral part of the show. So I thought we should yeah. give him his due. Sure. Uh, I. I like how they use Eddie. Okay. And I think it's it's kind of like with Martin, I guess, kind of taking that into account. Uh, Frazier getting used to the dog, doesn't like right. the dog. And they, he, he hates him at first and thinks him was like a nemesis. And I do like the slight moments when he gives in and doesn't quite hate Eddie. They're slight, though. But, but I'm, and I'm wondering know? how... 
I don't really remember, like, how consistent do you think it's good? Have, have they not done enough? Because I remember some episodes would go by and Eddie's barely even mentioned. Yeah, I don't think he was in every episode, um, but he certainly... I think like they get enough jokes. With him yeah, or? I was gonna say he's he's good. He's good for comic relief because, you know, you can, uh, for example, there's one coming up. We'll talk about in the next episode or yeah, the next Fraser Friday where, um, you know, Fraser is sneaking into Daphne's room accidentally, mm -hmm. and she starts yelling at Eddie for licking in the toilet bowl, but Fraser thinks she's uh, yelling at him. That's a great. So it's one. like so they you know they they use him I think sparingly. But, but when they need to, yeah, like a lot of times he'll just show up in the episode, just kind of walk up. Oh, Eddie, get but, down! Yeah, but most times it's for some sort of gag. Yeah, you know, and and I like the way that they've utilized him in that manner. Um, there's there's another there's another good tag scene that we'll talk about in the next episode where they use Eddie uh, holding a gun in his mouth to fake a murder. Uh -huh. You know, so I I I like. I'm not huge on like pets in shows i just i think it detracts a bit mm -hmm. um especially in like a traditional like family sitcom because i can't think of like too many where they utilize pets that i watched but i always thought they used eddie pretty well well and i think that's why like i think they knew what to do with him he wasn't just a prop like i remember i really hate full house but for some reason I never really watched it. you know how like when you watch a show and then you'll watch it like six months later, and it's the same episode that you just that you already saw. Like literally, or it seems the exact. No, like same. literally. Oh. Like Full House, I watched the episode where they lose the dog. It was like on Nick at Night, and I, nothing else was on, so I watched it. And I hate Full House, but whatever. <laughs> literally, like five or six months later, same thing. I was like, oh, I guess I'll watch Full House, and it was the same episode. Oh. So to me, that dog, I guess, was a big part of Full House, but that's only because that's the only like episode I watched of it. Interesting. Um. But I don't think he was. Like I don't think they really. Just for you, he kind of was. But just for me, because that time. episode, they lose the dog. But I feel like it was like the Brady Bunch. Like they had the dog for like two episodes, and then they never spoke of him again. It's like they have the dog you know? episode, <laughs> right? Well, and, and then Simpsons and then no is a more. good example because they had uh, they had Sandals Little Helper, but they kept him around. Actually, you know what? That is a good example because they they've I I wouldn't say they utilize him as much as Eddie, but he's always there. If they he and has if they his need, moments. If they need him for an episode here or a gag there, they'll use him. And his introduction, of course, was a classic yeah his introduction episode. was the, the first episode of the show. Yeah, I mean, so you know, so yeah. I can't deny that um but yeah i think maybe that's the difference that they the, the writers really knew how to play eddie off for a gag yeah and you also know? um i guess side uh just hats off to and compliments to the trainers and the dog because yeah i, I think there were three different dogs throughout the series because they because they got them Eddie. on point uh really to, to get a lot of the yeah, time yeah he really i mean he 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 was a well-trained dog for sure and it got along well with the cast and they must yeah. have had to do a lot of training with the dog i don't know if there's any behind the scenes stuff but i just realized that that's not very common in a lot of sitcoms no it's not and, and i think that's probably why especially if you're shooting in front of a live audience like fraser does uh or did um yeah, I would imagine it's very hard because it's all timing, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and if the dog messes up, then you got to reshoot the whole scene or whatever. Hmm. Um, so that's an interesting point. It's just something I was yeah. thinking about. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, there's plenty more Eddie episodes to talk about. Oh, for sure. So yeah, so we'll get we'll get to that. But uh, yeah, you're you're right. We we really didn't give him his due like, yet. Let's like, give you know give Eddie. But more. that's good. That's what we should do every you know every season. Let's see how they're doing. The characters yeah, ta doing. tackle on uh, New maybe a different character to discuss or something. Um, but that's it for part one mm -hmm. of season two. We'll be back with uh, part two and then the the full season wrap up. I think, other than the matchmaker, I think most of my favorite episodes of the season are yet to come. There are a lot of good Would ones. You say in season so. Two. I I think so far I'm really liking season two a lot. Yeah, yeah, me as well. Um, so that's going to be it. Check us out uh, pretty much every Friday on the, on the Fraser Fridays. We're trying to knock them out one a week. Mm -hmm. um, and in the meantime, if you're into Disney, we're, we're doing the Disney uh, animated films as well. Uh, Merlin's always got stuff on his channel. Always. Uh, you know, if you're into TV, maybe not necessarily sitcoms, but, you know, always some kind of uh, sci-fi stuff, anime, genre, um, reviews. Uh, trailers. Did you do something with Detective Pikachu that uh, I just saw? I, I, uh... I, oh, it was Sonic. I talked Sonic, about that's what it was, the Sonic, Sonic trailer. trailer. Yep. Though, mm -hmm. I'll probably be seeing Detective Pikachu soon and might be reviewing it. I've got, yeah. uh, maybe we can talk, you're welcome to come over if you see him. I've got um, 
John Wick's coming out. We got Godzilla. Yeah, this summer's gonna be big for your channel. Yeah, I, on movies. There's a lot of movies I'm really interested. Yeah, in. Yeah, like almost every week or two, there's Spider-Man's something happening. Next month. Yeah, it's just a lot. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting. Yeah. Um, but all right, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you back here next time. Bye.